So, Wuthering Ways released, and it's been an absolute blast for a lot of people playing so far. But that doesn't mean there hasn't been the fair share of problems and issues since launch, which a lot of them have been fixed by this point. However, there's some that are still in the game. Yeah, hungry for pixels, brother. I mean... And some general concerns about the way the game works and the progression through it. So I put out a Google form to ask my community what kind of changes they'd like to see from Wuthering Waves to just make the game better, not just for themselves, but for everybody involved. First of all, one of the biggest changes I'd love to see is tacit fields being reduced from 60 wave plates to 40 wave plates. It's not like you can just get a lot of echo level up materials easily. Tacit fields are one of the best ways to do it after a certain point, and it's just so expensive. And the community did say decrease wave plate cost from 60 to 40 period as well, just because there's that many things that do cost wave plates. The fact that echoes are free is huge, but you still need to level them up as well as your character and your skills and your weapons and get credits. The next thing my community wanted to see was increase the echo drops from 30% to at least 40%. A lot of people feel like you go around and collect echoes, but most of the time they just don't drop, which is true. I don't think that's too big of a deal because they are endlessly farmable, especially if you go into different co-op worlds and it kind of promotes a healthy multiplayer aspect of the game. So I don't think this is a huge issue, but I can see why people would. Let me know what you think. There is a lot of localization mistakes in Wuthering Waves since the launch. Sometimes text overlaps with numbers like resonance, liberation, damage bonus in the echo stat screen. And there's a lot of issues with the story with localization issues. There's actually a pretty big issue that came about, which I'm not sure a lot of people are aware of, where Jian's signature weapon effect is written as each time an intro skill or resonance skill, when it should be each time an intro skill or resonance liberation, which is a huge deal because I pulled this weapon for my car Charo, thinking it was resonance skill that dealt the damage effects, but it's actually resonance liberation, which makes it nowhere near as good as it was. People are spending money on these items, and if they're not getting what they're promised, that's a pretty big issue. So I'm hoping to see Kuro Games address this properly in the future. Another huge thing people want to see added to the game is more graphical settings and increasing the frame rate limit. A big reason for this is that in the beta, there was a 120 FPS option, which I don't actually think worked in the beta, but the option was there. I think they're probably working on this in the background and they will add it in the future and that'd be best case scenario. The game runs like butter but I would personally like to see a couple of added options for turning down the transparency of visual effects. One of the biggest ways you can get an upper hand in combat is by parrying and the way that you parry is by timing your attacks with this glowing circle that gets smaller and smaller on the enemies and bosses. Sometimes when you've got thousands of different lights and color combinations going on on your screen it obscures that and it's really difficult to see when you should be parrying and dodging. So having a couple of extra graphical options would be very nice. A huge thing that I would love Kuro Games to add to Wuthering Waves is more glider options. The glider's pretty cool as it is, but spoiler alert for the end of the 1.0 story here, the rover, when he gets his havoc form, gets these wings in the story that look awesome. They look so cool. And one of the coolest things to me would be when you're gliding to be able to just show those instead and like glide through the air with your wings instead of holding onto this tacit discord looking thing. And I get it. It's supposed to be an echo that you bring out, but then let us get more echoes as glider skins. We can currently get skins for echoes as shinies, so why not let us just get some glider shinies, you know? Make them look different, make them look cool. Another big issue is being able to lock onto enemies, and the camera in general in a lot of fights does suck, especially with the flying bird bosses. Sometimes you'd be looking at an enemy and do a plunge attack, and you'll end up on the other side of the world somehow. That's just a bug. I'm sure that'll get fixed, but in general, the lock on cameras does kind of suck, to be honest. A lot of the times I find myself just not using it and moving my mouse, but that's also an issue because the maximum sensitivity of the mouse isn't that good. Like, it doesn't go that high. I feel like they need to tweak it a little bit to make the range from 0 to 100 a lot higher. I have to move my mouse across my entire mouse mat on 1600 DPI. It shouldn't be like that. Another change that many other gacha games have considered in the past is an underground map. It is very difficult to be able to navigate stuff on lower layers of the world and also find certain things, like where entrances and openings are, so I do think they should make those a bit clearer. But one thing I do like is the map markers. They're very specific and you can put a lot of them down. I personally use them a lot for shiny echoes, which is also another problem. And I know 
it sounds like there's so many problems, but these are just pet peeves that people would like to see adjusted and addressed in the future. And I do agree with this one. Phantom Echoes, aka Shinies, do have fixed locations. So the Echoes appear in the same spot all the time. You just have to be there at the right time of day and find them. That kind of takes away from the Shiny experience. If you've ever played Pokemon, you find Shinies totally at random. And I think that's how it should be in Wuthering Waves as well. I want to be able to go Shiny hunting, not Shiny gathering, knowing exactly where they're going to be at all times. A lot of people also want to see Echoes be able to be used as XP before leveling them up, which I do think would be a pretty good change. And it would also kind of take away from the fact that the wave plate cost for Tacit Fields is 60 instead of 40. If they plan on keeping it like that, I think it would be huge to be able to use any unleveled Echoes as XP. Another big change people would love to see, and understandably so, is an overflow system. Such as in Honkai Star Rail, if you don't log on and spend your wave plates, people want to be able to see it over cap and maybe build up in a separate like reserves function, which I do think would be huge for the game. Not everybody can play every single day like me, so making it more friendly to people that go out and touch grass would be a great thing. Now, some little quality of life services here. Some people would really like to see some incentives for leveling characters. Like Genshin, you level up characters 20, 40, 60 levels and get standard pulls and things like that, which I think could be a nice little change. And Kuro have been very generous and listened to a lot of feedback so far, so I wouldn't be surprised if they would add this in the future and make it retroactive so that the characters you've already leveled, you can just claim the wishes from. I think that'd be huge. Somebody said when you have an echo equipped and use it, sometimes it targets a wall or an enemy that's five cities away instead of the enemy that's in front of it, which is very true. I've noticed this a lot, especially with some echoes that have multiple moves like the Inferno Rider. If you do an attack with the Inferno Rider and do one swing and the enemy teleports just behind you, you'll keep swinging in the same direction you were originally going instead of the echo adjusting behind you to hit the enemy. And as a person who loves co-op, it'd be useful if they add a hundred slots for friends. I don't know why Gacha Games are so hell-bent on having 50 friend slots on launch. I really do think it'd be more beneficial, especially in a game that utilizes co-op as much as we are, to be able to have more than 100 friends. I think it'd be great, and I do think that should be a change that comes pretty soon. They also suggest for Kuro to not listen to every criticism given, and they list the funniest thing for this dude. The Scar Pants. He had a little onigiri... Cock zip, for lack of a better word. And they removed it because people said it was a problem. It's not a problem. It was just funny. Let people laugh. Maybe don't listen to every single criticism, but criticisms that will greatly affect the player's experience in the game would be huge. A lot of people have so many issues with the voice acting in Mother in Waves, and I do agree. As much as I hate to say it because I feel like I sound like a dick, the voice actors do a phenomenal job at portraying the characters, but the voice direction is horrendous in certain situations. And a lot of the characters genuinely sound like AI. Kuro have addressed this and have said that they're getting a voice director, which will make a big difference in the future, I'm sure of it. And also the fact that a lot of the voice actors, if not all of them, are British, which isn't a problem, by the way. British is good. It's just that they were kind of forced to do accents that they weren't comfortable with. And without a voice director, that's tough and it shows. Some people are also very annoyed that they're giving out a lot of free stuff, saying the game's gonna die and that the people aren't gonna spend, so the game won't be able to stay alive. Also saying it looks desperate. To that, I say you're never going to please everybody. That is the same people that are begging for more rewards from other games like Genshin Impact. But as soon as a game does give more rewards or apologems or whatever you want to call it, it's suddenly a big problem. Just be happy with what you get at this point. It's a non-issue that people are turning into an issue. People also want more of unique, diverse characters. Designs that are not too much and also better music. So to that, I would also agree. I do think the music needs to be a bit more diverse, but I think the hiring a composer too for the game specifically, which be huge. Uh, I can't verify that, but people have told me they don't currently have like a musical director yet. The music in PGR is absolutely out of this world phenomenal. I heard some today and it is absolutely goaded. It's some of the best music in a gacha game I've heard actually. And some of the music in Wuwa, like the crownless boss fight music is also great. It makes you feel powerful, like you're part of the fight, like you're actually doing stuff. So I do think Kuro have got this in the bag. I think they will add more in the future, but honestly for the release of the game, there's just not that many memorable tracks. A lot of it's more mellow and chill and the game doesn't really give that vibe. As for the character designs, I think the designs are pretty diverse already, to be honest. Sure, more diversity is always good. I would personally love to see some characters that aren't necessarily human looking. Having purely human characters in an alien world is cool and all if the designs are that diverse, but I'd love to see some extra stuff, for sure. The character tutorials in the game are also really, really good. However, a lot of people struggle with dodging and parrying, so they would also like some specific tutorials on dodging certain enemy movesets and parrying 
just to make them feel a bit more comfortable with it. And to that, I think that's a good idea. If you don't like it, you don't have to do it. But if people want a bit more help and handholding, that's a good thing. And that's a lot of the main issues people have with Wuthering Waves at the minute. Honestly, I'm loving the game. I'm enjoying it a hell of a lot. Playing it for hours and hours a day, losing track of time. And most other people are too. So they can't be doing that bad. A lot of the issues since launch have been fixed or at the very least addressed that they're gonna be fixed. So I think Kuro are listening. And honestly, it feels really good to have devs that are listening to the player base and making and implementing these changes. So I have very high hopes for Wuthering Waves going forward. As much as I'm enjoying the game now, I hope in a month's time, I'll be enjoying it just as much doing echo farming daily with you guys on Twitch and on YouTube, making banger videos and enjoying every minute of it like I am right now. Thank you so much for watching. If you're interested in more Wuthering Waves content, please feel free to subscribe to the channel. It helps me out a lot and it'll help you stay up to date with all the news and everything and drop a like on the video if you liked it. And if you didn't like it, drop a like anyway.